Hello everyone. In continuation of our discussion on frequency response, let us talk about the frequency response of a series RLC circuit. We have an inductor, capacitor and a resistor. Sinusoidal input voltage is given across this pair of terminals and output is being measured across the resistor. Now the impedance of the resistor is R. The impedance of this capacitor is 1 upon J omega C and the impedance or rather the reactance of this inductor is J omega L. We can easily write V out is V in times R upon R plus 1 upon J omega C plus J omega L. In other words, we can write the transfer function H of omega which is V out upon V in in this case as R upon R plus, if I take J out, I can say omega L minus 1 upon omega C. Simplifying this, I can write the magnitude of this transfer function H of omega would come out to be this. This is the gain magnitude. Now, let us try to roughly sketch how H of omega would look like for different values of omega. So, as omega tends to 0, h of omega tends to 0. As omega tends to infinity, you can use the L'Hopital rule and find out that even as omega tends to infinity, h of omega would tend to 0. So for both the lower and the upper end, magnitude of h tends to 0. Is there any value in between for omega for which magnitude actually tends to 1? If this term was actually 0, in that case, mod of h would tend to omega rc upon square root of omega rc the whole square, that is 1. So, for this term to tend to 0 implies omega has to be equal to 1 upon square root lc. That means when omega is square root of lc, in that case h of omega tends to 1. So, as omega is very less, the amplitude is 0. As omega is very high, the amplitude tends to 0. Somewhere in between, when omega is equal to square root of LC, does the magnitude become equal to 1. This frequency is called the resonant frequency of this RLC circuit. What is the meaning of resonance here? If we talk about the magnitude of reactances offered by the inductor and the capacitor, the magnitude of the reactance offered by the inductor is omega L and that offered by capacitor is 1 upon omega C. We have already seen that in effect they are in opposite directions because this, is, this has a phase 90 degree and this has a phase minus 90 degree. So they are actually in opposition to each other. If I have reactance on the vertical axis and omega in the horizontal axis, the inductive reactance looks something like this. This is omega L. It's a straight line. The capacitive reactance is 1 upon omega C. So you can say it's hyperbolic. Okay. We know that they both are in opposite directions. That means the frequency at which they both become equal in magnitude, they would end up cancelling each other out and for a series RLC circuit, if I write the impedance, the total impedance is R plus J omega L minus 1 upon omega C. At the frequency, when both of their magnitudes are equal, they end up cancelling each other out and this term becomes equal to 0. That means that frequency where omega L actually is equal to 1 upon omega C or in other words, omega is 1 upon square root LC is the frequency at which the reactive component of the impedance totally disappears and the impedance becomes entirely resistive. So that frequency is called the resonant frequency omega naught and its value is 1 upon square root LC. If I had mod Z on the vertical axis and omega here, initially at low frequencies, the contribution of capacitor would be more and resistor is of course constant. As frequency would increase, the contribution of omega L 
becomes more and that of omega c reduces. So in effect, the impedance would look something like this. Now the frequency at which the impedance is the minimum and that minimum value is simply when mod z is equal to r, this is the frequency that corresponds to omega naught, which is equal to 1 upon square root lc. This is called the resonant frequency and since impedance is minimum, if I draw magnitude of current through this circuit, I would find that the current would have a nature like this. Because impedance is minimum at the resonant frequency, the current actually becomes maximum at the resonant frequency. This is how the gain of this filter changes with frequency. For lower frequencies, the gain is very less. For very high frequencies, the gain is very less. But for a certain range of frequencies, the gain is almost 1. That means this is the kind of filter that is going to allow only a certain range of frequencies to pass and attenuate or suppress all the other frequencies. One thing we've established that this is a band pass filter that allows a certain band of frequencies to pass. How to define what is that band of frequencies? We take the help of the same concept that we use for low pass and high pass filters. That is the 3 dB frequency. That means what is that frequency at which the gain in dB would fall to minus 3 dB? Or in terms of magnitude, not in dB, the gain becomes 1 by root 2. As the plot suggests, there would be two such frequencies where the gain becomes 1 by root 2, which is actually 0 0.707. Let me call this omega L to represent lower frequency and omega H, which is higher frequency. It is this range of frequency which will be called the bandwidth of this filter. That means bandwidth is omega h minus omega l that represents that band of frequency which would be allowed to pass through the series RLC circuit through this band pass filter with negligible attenuation. Okay. To find the value of these frequencies, let us set mod h to 1 by root 2. That means this would be a quadratic equation in omega. Uh, when you solve them, you get two frequencies. Looking at the values of omega L and omega H, it may also be stated that omega naught is actually the geometric mean of omega L and omega H. We would notice that for the same resonant frequency, that means the same value of L and C, as you go on increasing the value of R, the width of the band pass region goes on increasing. That means increasing the value of R in this kind of a circuit actually leads to decrease in the sharpness of the band pass region or rather decrease in the bandwidth. Right? For a band pass filter, if we want to restrict a very limited range of frequencies to pass through this filter and suppress all the others, we need that the resonant peak should be very sharp. If you do the same analysis for a parallel RLC circuit, you would find that you could actually increase the sharpness by increasing R. But for a series RLC bandpass circuit, as R is increased, the sharpness of this bandpass region decreases. Sharpness of resonant peak is denoted by quality factor Q where Q is defined as 2 pi times the ratio of maximum energy stored to the total energy lost per cycle at resonance. Now, without going into the derivation, I can simply write that Q for this RLC circuit would, on simplification, and substituting these values for a sinusoidal input signal, say, say of the form A cos omega t or A sin omega t, would come out to be omega naught L by R or 1 upon omega naught RC. This is the quality factor for a series RLC band pass filter. Okay. And as you can see, that quality factor would increase as the value of R decreases. Alternatively, if we combine these equations, we can write that the bandwidth is L by R or omega naught by q okay. or in other words we can also write that the quality factor is a ratio of resonant frequency 
and the bandwidth. This means that a bandpass filter would become more selective. That means it would have a higher value of Q if the bandwidth is decreased. Thank you.